Hello Algebra 1 students. In this video, I'm going to be going over an example on comparing graphs and we're going to do a few different types of questions related to comparing graphs similar to what you'll see on your practice and I'm also going to do a little bit of a review of average rate of change. So in this scenario, we are looking at a graph that is comparing the usage of landlines versus cell phones. So the description tells us H of T is the percentage of homes in the United States that have a landline phone in year T. C of T is the percentage of homes with only a cell phone. Here are the graphs of H and C. Well, I'm going to start by just making sure I know exactly which line to look at when I'm looking at H of T versus C of T. So H of T in the problem, it says H of T is the people that have a landline phone and in my graph the key tells me the landline phone is the solid blue line so i'm just going to circle this in blue to remember that it's the solid blue line and i'm also going to write right here to remind myself right at the beginning that this is h of t c of t is the percentage of homes with only a cell phone so my key tells me the cell phone only graph is the one with the dotted line which is red so I'm going to kind of remind myself that this is C of T and I'm going to label it down here as well so that I don't forget which graph to look at. It's very important that we start by making sure we know which graph is which since they're on the same grid. We don't want to make a mistake that way. So I'm going to start with my first question on the top right, which says, what is H of 2008? Well, I'm starting by noticing that I'm looking at the H graph, which is the blue solid line. So I'm going to be looking at the blue line and it's giving me an input of 2008. So that is a time or a year. So I'm going to go down to the X axis, the horizontal axis where it says year and I need to find 2008. And I see 2008 is, let's see, I'll do it right here, right here. And then I need to go up to my blue line, not to my red line. I'm going to go past the red line and up to my blue line to see what is the output for the input of 2008 for H of T. So I need to then see, okay, here's the point on my graph. And I just need to go look what is the Y value or the output, which in this case is percentage of homes and it is at the value of 80. So H of 2008 equals 80. All right, so now that we've kind of practiced reading our graph, the next question asks, for what value of T does H of T equal C of T? So this means I'm looking for where on my graph my two lines have the same Y value, okay? So I'm not looking for the same time. I'm looking for what time are my graphs at the same Y value. So in other words, I need to look for where my graphs are intersecting with each other. So I need to look where is the blue line and the red dotted line crossing and touching each other. And I can see that that's happening right here. So now I just need to figure out at what time is this occurring? Well, to do that, I need to go down to my x-axis where the time is. Now I can see I'm between 2014 and 2016, so I must be at 2015. So at what value of t does h of t equal c of t? That's going to be at t equals 2015. And then we can also write that means h of 2015 is equal to C of 2015. That means what that's telling us is that in 2015, the percentage of homes with a landline was the same as the percentage of homes with only a cell phone. Okay. My next question, if I go down one, it says, which is true? H of 2016 is less than C of 2016 or H of 2016 is greater than C of 2016? Okay. Well, before I get a little um, caught up with, you know, all these different symbols here. I first I noticed that it's asking me to compare the percentage of homes with landlines and the percentage of homes with just cell phones in the year of 2016. So I'm just going to start by going to my graph and finding 
where 2016 is so I know what I'm talking about. So here's 2016 and then I need to go look up at where each of my graphs are at 2016. So I need to figure out which graph or which function has a greater value. So to do that, I just need to think, well, which line is higher, the blue line or the red dotted line? Obviously, the red dotted line is higher here. So that means that the percentage of the cell phones is higher. So C of 2016 is bigger than H of 2016. So I need to make sure that my inequality symbol is it needs to point to the lower function and and open up towards the higher function. The higher function is C, so I need my inequality symbol to be opening up to C and pointing to H because H is the smaller one. So again, this is C of 2016 is right here, and then H of 2016 is right below it. So that means H of 2016 is smaller, so that inequality symbol needs to point to H of 2016, and it needs to be opening up to C of 2016 because that's the bigger number. So this is the true statement here. Um, another way I think sometimes people describe the inequality symbol as like an alligator, and it wants to eat the bigger thing. So that's why it's opening up towards the bigger value, C of 2016. Again, C was the dotted line and that was higher on the graph, so it's the bigger value. And H of 2016 is smaller, so it points to the smaller value, okay? So just make sure you know how to use those inequality symbols correctly. I'm actually gonna skip over all the way to the left and do what does C of 2008 equal 20 mean in the context of the graph? Well, we know that the number in the parentheses is the year, and then the number outside the parentheses is our output, which in this case is percentage of homes. So now let's just put this into a sentence. Oh, also, we should probably pay close attention to which function it's talking about. It's talking about C, which is homes with cell phones, with only cell phones, only cell phones. So let me put this into a sentence. I'm going to start with telling what time it is. In 2008, that's the year we're talking about, the percentage of homes with only cell phones was, and we look at the number outside the parentheses to figure that out, it was 20%. You could have said anything similar to this. It doesn't need to be the exact same way you write it. Another thing you could have said was just in 2008, 20% of homes had only cell phones. Okay. So just make sure you know what your input is. That's in the parentheses. It's almost always time that's in the parentheses. And then what's outside the parentheses is our y, what's on the y-axis or the output, which is the percentage of homes. All right, the last question is, what is the average rate of change of C of T on the interval 2008 is less than or equal to T is less than or equal to 2013? Well, first of all, I know I'm looking at my red dotted line for this, and I'm it's asking me for the average rate of change between 2008 and 2013. So I should probably start by plotting the points on the red dotted line at 2008 and 2013. So if I go to 2008, and I go up to my red line, here's the point there. And then if I go to 2013, which is between 2012 and 2014, and go up again to my red dotted line, that's the only graph we're looking at right now, I plot another point there. Now I need to find the average rate of change between these two points, so that means I'm going to need, need a change in y and a change in x, and I'm going to need to divide them. So my change in y, I always start with the point on the left first and figure out, am I going up or down to get to the next point? Well, as you can see, the graph is increasing, so I am going to go up. So I need to figure out how far up do I have to go? Well, actually, I'll do a little loop. That might be easier to see. 
So I, this is how far I have to go up from my first point to my second point. Now I just need to figure out what's how many Y values did I go up? Well, I only went up one grid box, but as I can see, um, that on my Y axis is counting by 20s, 20, 40, 60, 80. So to go from 20 to 40, what is my change in Y? To get from 20 to 40, that takes 20. 20 plus 20 will give me get me to 40. So I'm going up 20. That's my change in Y. My change in X, I need to go to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's just double check. Am I counting by one year each line? Let's see, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. Yes, so it is counting by one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means five years went by in that in that um, from between the two points are five years and it went up by 20% in five years. So I have 20 divided by five to give me my average rate of change. That will give me four as my average rate of change on that interval. Okay, um, I hope this helped with your homework and let me know if you have any questions.